What's going on, Cage Nation? Your boy Kendrick Red of Dreadlock. We're here back with a new video after <laughs> another long break. I know my last video, which was a review of the um, When They See Us Netflix movie. I have a little bit of free time since now I am on summer vacation. So I will use this week as I have the most free time this week to drop a few more videos for you guys. So be on the lookout for that. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's still subscribing to the channel, even though I haven't really been dropping new content on a regular basis like I used to. But I am definitely trying to make up for that now and trying to get some new videos out to you throughout the summer. So, you know, bear with me if I don't get videos out on a regular schedule like you guys are used to. It's still going to be a busy summer for me. I am still working on a few things. As a matter of fact, I will most likely be probably going <laughs> live. I'll be doing a live some point this week to fill you guys in on everything that's going on with me and as well as Ketamation Studios. So be on the lookout for that live stream and I hope you guys plan to join in. All that being said, let's jump right into this one. And this one came to me actually. This idea came to me right before you know school let out for the summer. Um if you guys don't know I am a huge Dragon Ball fan, specifically Dragon Ball Z. I, I have watched Dragon Ball. I've watched Dragon Ball Super. I've even watched Dragon Ball GT. Not all of GT, but most of GT. Um, I haven't finished Dragon Ball Heroes yet. I've played a great deal of the Dragon Ball games. I have a few collectibles, as you guys can see here. I have my little special Vegito figure. I also have my um, uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly um, figure, as well as a couple other... Um, little figures from the Dragon Ball universe. This year actually marks the 30th anniversary of Dragon Ball Z. Not Dragon Ball, but Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z came out, what, 1980, yeah, 1989, Dragon Ball premiered. So, to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Dragon Ball Z, I am putting out the first Probably like my real first social media challenge, and I'm calling it the Shenron 7. Similar to how Nando V Movies created the hashtag One Marvelous Scene initiative that took all the films from the Marvel Cinematic Universe and allowed YouTube content creators to pick one scene out of the entire franchise and tell us why their scene was their favorite one, hence their one marvelous scene. The Shenron 7, or hashtag the Shenron 7, just basically asks you a series of questions, seven questions to be exact, um, that gives you the chance to show your appreciation for the entire Dragon Ball franchise. So it won't just be Dragon Ball Z related. You can go from Dragon Ball, you can go GT, you can go Super, you can go Heroes, anything dealing with Dragon Ball attached to it, licensed or not licensed is fair game and the rules are really simple you answer the seven questions in a fair amount of detail all of dragon ball lore like i said is acceptable for all your answers so anything dealing with dragon ball is open to you it has to be in a video form i know that kind of sucks for people who aren't you know used to doing videos or don't like doing videos i will accept a voice over type video so if you want to do you know, a video with just like images or animations and stuff and you just want to have your voice voice over it, that is fine too, but I would prefer it be in a video form. You must challenge somebody else after you've answered your question and you can challenge as many people as you want. You can challenge one person, you can challenge seven people, you can challenge a hundred people to basically answer these questions. And you must include, this is very important, the, the hashtag, the Shenron7, has to be included. Whether it's in the title, whether it's in your video, whatever, it has to be included. Those rules seem pretty simple, right? Um, over the years, you know, there's been a lot, there's either real diehard Dragon Ball, for, Dragon Ball fans, or there's real people that just can't stand Dragon Ball for whatever reason. I have always been a supporter of the Dragon Ball franchise even when it wasn't that great I've still always been a supporter of it and I figured like I said since it's the 30th anniversary of Dragon Ball Z 
this would be a good way for people to really show their appreciation for the franchise. So, as I'm the one that's starting this challenge, I'm going to be the first one to answer these own questions. So, we're going to start off with question one. Question one is, what got you into Dragon Ball? Whether it was Z, GT, Super, etc. What got me into Dragon Ball, specifically Dragon Ball Z, was Toonami. It was Toonami that got me into it. Um, I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm at an age where I was around when Dragon Ball was airing on... Well, it was the WB then. It was airing on the WB back in the day on like early Saturday or early Sunday mornings. And I would catch episodes here and there if I got up early enough to watch them. Um, after that, I hadn't seen... I hadn't seen Dragon Ball, anything Dragon Ball related for a good amount of years, save for like those video game magazines where they had the action figures for sale. I remember those, and I remember seeing them thinking those are pretty cool. I had a vague idea of what Dragon Ball was about, but I didn't really know what it was really about. Um, interestingly enough, I saw a couple of the movies movies before I started watching the series. Um, my sister had a friend that had all the um, movies, and he let me watch a couple of them. Um, that was before Toonami really got on the Dragon Ball ball, essentially. So, it was Toonami that really got me into Dragon Ball Z. Um, once Toonami, when Tom showed up, and it began to start getting mainstream attention, that's when I really jumped into the Dragon Ball Z um fiasco and I was fully into it I was completely completely into the Dragon Ball Z world and you couldn't tell me nothing at the time and I had a lot of stuff I had like I said I still have a good amount of video games and I like every new Dragon Ball Z game that came out especially on the PlayStation 2 or 3 I got I had the, I had the original Japanese PlayStation games and I still kind of miss them I had shirts I had Dragon Ball the I had the Dragon Ball Z button up shirts I used to rock those hard in high school um, and after a while, I started collecting all the tapes, you know, you know, like all the seasons and stuff. I started collecting those on VHS after a while. So it was Toonami that got me into Dragon Ball Z heavy. <laughs> Question two asks, who is your favorite character and why? Um, there's a lot of favorite, there's a lot of characters that I really enjoy. Um, and there's so many that I can choose from, but if I really had to pick who my favorite character is I kind of have to go with Perfect Cell something about Perfect Cell really just stuck with me and it may have been the fact that um the Android Saga was the um one that I um invested a whole bunch of time in because at the time when it was on Toonami it was still kind of finishing up the Frieza Saga when the Android Saga started, that's when I completely jumped into it. Like, I was on it every day. So, when the introduction of Cell came into play, it just threw me forward because, mind you, I still didn't know a lot about the Dragon Ball franchise up until then. So, there was a lot of things that I didn't know that had already happened because it came out in Japan. It's perfect Cell to me. To me, I mean, it, 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 he really kind of is the perfect villain. You know, he's not like Frieza, who is a, who is a total tyrant, who is like, like as um team, you know, team force I would say, space Napole Hitler. That's pretty much who Frieza was. Um, he wasn't like Majin Buu, who was just a destructive force of nature. You know, Perfect Cell. Like he he just had this super air of confidence about him, so much so that he decided to just hold a tournament to test out his n perfect body before destroying everything. To me, that level of confidence, while it ended up being his downfall in the end, that level of confidence is pretty brazen and is pretty interesting to look at. Perfect Cell has always been one of those characters that I've always enjoyed seeing on screen. Like, I would. I had hoped that he would reemerge again in Dragon Ball Super. There, there's probably a chance that he might. I'm not sure. I'm not reading the Dragon Ball Super manga, but Perfect Cell to me, he like he. It's just something about Perfect Cell. 
that really that really I that I gravitate to as far as a character. Um, why, I mean, the fact that he transforms and like each transformation, you know, Senate has gives him a different personality. Like when he was imperfect, you know, he was like a stalker, like a stalker serial killer type character. <laughs> when he was semi-perfect he was still i mean we didn't get really much with semi-perfect cell because his that form was really short-lived um he, that's the time he spent trying to hunt down android 18 so he can absorb her then when he became perfect it was like he was he almost became royalty that i think that might have been the freezer side of him coming out but he did it in such a different regard that it was just like he couldn't help but kind of be taken in by him kind of i mean i know it sounds weird for me to talk about perfect cell like that but perfect cell to me embodies what a well-rounded villain should be like he's not one thing he's not a complete psychopath but again he's not a complete tyrant either he's like right in the middle and any character that can kind of get goku to give up and i granted that's what's the writing any character that can get Goku to give up the fight, realizing that he can't win, you know, kind of says something. It kind of says something to me. Question number three is, what's your favorite saga and why? Again, as I mentioned in the last question, it's the Android saga. The Android, um, perfect. The Android Cell saga was the saga that I really enjoyed because, again, I spent a lot more time with it. You know, for a whole school year, that's what I was on. I was on the whole Android Saga. To me, I've, I've made the comparison to the Android Saga to Terminator. Um, you've probably seen a lot of people trying to make comparisons to each Saga to a popular film that that's ever come out. You know, the Frieza Saga, so to speak, is almost like, kind of like Star Wars in a sense, maybe. I could be wrong. The Frieza Saga is kind of like Star Wars. It's a space odyssey. It's a space adventure. Um, I've always equated the Android Saga to Terminator, to the Terminator franchise. You know, because here you have uh, Trunks, who's from the future, travels back in time to prevent the future from being further destroyed because of androids, which you can look at as like Terminators. Um... The idea of time travel, you know, in Dragon Ball Z was interesting. And I know a lot of people have different, what's the best way to put it, have different, you know, thoughts or theories on time travel. In fact, Avengers Endgame was, say what you want about Avengers Endgame, but it was one movie that at least tried to make time travel or the different theories surrounding time travel kind of makes sense so you know even with you know the android saga with trunks you know traveling back in time but only to realize that him traveling back in time was only changing the future of that timeline it wasn't changing the future of his the only thing he gained after traveling back in time was you know more knowledge of how to destroy the androids from his universe or his timeline um goku getting sick goku catching a heart virus you know that was interesting so he was down for the count for a minute the this is where they first started introducing or getting into the idea of ascended super saiyans different levels of super saiyan you know vegeta finally he became a super saiyan gohan finally became a super saiyan which is always interesting because you know, before the Android Saga came in, you know, there was a small filler season of Garlic Jr.'s return. And this, again, this is before I knew anything about the Dragon Ball Z continuity. So I always thought that Gohan would have turned Super Saiyan during the Garlic Jr. Saga, but that didn't happen. So then it just left me wondering, when is he going to turn Super Saiyan? You know, and the fact that he actually becomes the strongest Super Saiyan during the cell games reaching super saiyan level two was perfection everything about the android cell saga was just bloody well done you know it got you invested emotionally you know watching gohan's transformation from 
this kid who had an explosive power that that he couldn't really understand to it being a controlled fury that he was able to be perfect cell with um Goku dying again but this time sacrificing himself I mean a lot of people like to argue that he kind of sacrificed himself during this fight with Raditz but that was just that was that was a heat of the moment type of thing that's what that was you know but when he consciously decided that the best way to save Earth is to take Cell off a planet off the planet bring him to King Kai's planet so he can explode there and then Goku gets caught in a crossfire the fact that he chooses not to come back at the end of the saga and I mean as you guys know that the the Dragon Ball Z was supposed to end a few times it was supposed to end after the Frieza saga and then what was supposed to happen during the Cell games it was supposed to become Gohan's story uh, after Goku's death it was supposed to be Gohan's story so leading uh, like going after the Cell saga Gohan was supposed to be the hero we all know how that turned out so, um, like I said, I invested a lot more time, you know, not to say that I didn't invest time in the other seasons, you know, the Boo Saga, the Boo Saga was just fun, the Boo Saga was very fun, there were a lot of moments where all emotions ran high, you know, Vegeta's sacrifice, um, you know, just a couple of things, the world actually being destroyed. Boo, I mean, granted, Boo was the villain that actually did what he was supposed to do. He destroyed the Earth. But, there was just a lot of things going on within that scene. There's like, there was like a lot of last-ditch efforts that were that they were using to try to stop him. You know, the fusion technique, the um, Patara earrings, you know, Gohan, you know, ultimate Gohan. It was, um, again, it was fun. It was definitely fun to watch. But, to me, just the stakes in the Android saga just seemed a little bit more dire to me. So that's why the Android and Cell Saga are my favorite is my favorite saga. Question number four is asking, what's your favorite Dragon Ball related movie and or video game and why? Um as far as movie is concerned, I mean there's a couple of Dragon Ball movies that I really enjoyed. Um the first Broly movie. I enjoyed the first Broly movie a lot. I thought that, I think the first Broly movie is a lot of fun. You know, this is the first time we're actually seeing them going up against someone who's like them, another Super Saiyan. I thought that was cool. BoJack Unbound, I think, is pretty cool also. I like that movie. I'd say if I had to pick who my favorite movies are, it's the Broly movie, The Return of Cooler. You know, The Return, the Return of Cooler was awesome. Um, BoJack Unbound. Um... Um, Fusion Reborn, of course, and Wrath of the Dragon. Those are the movies that I enjoyed the most within the Dragon Ball um, Z franchise. Of course, Dragon Ball Super Broly is one of my favorite movies. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I saw it in the movie theaters. I thought it was great. That's why I have the figure. And the fact that they retconned Broly's um, backstory some. So, in fact, they, they retconned everyone's backstory, basically. Goku, Vegeta, and Broly. They retconned their whole backstory. So, I thought it was pretty great. As far as video games is concerned, I would say my favorite Dragon Ball Z video game will now and forever be Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3. To me, that was the most complete Dragon Ball fighter when that came out. I know we had gotten Infinite Worlds, which was basically a updated version of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3. Dragon Ball Z on Infinite Worlds was cool. Um, I just, I just never owned it. If I had known about it, I would definitely have gotten that. But I, I love Dragon Ball Z Budokai Three. I love it. Um, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi Two and Three. I love it both. I like Two for its music, but I like Three for its roster. The uh, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi Three had like an insane roster. And this is including transformations of different characters as well. Um, Z Xenoverse. I enjoyed a lot. I just couldn't really invest too much time in it, really. Um, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit is actually fun, and I and I really got Burst Limit because it was the first Dragon Ball Z game for PlayStation Three. It was essentially Dragon Ball Z Budokai, just on PlayStation Three. That's really what it was, and the animations were just just the animations were better. Um, 
there are a lot of games after that that I didn't play, and you know, I never played the Ultimate Tycoon, uh, Ultimate Tenkaichi series. Um, you know, I did I did play Super Dragon Ball Z. I didn't really enjoy that too much, even though it was supposed to be more like a Street Fighter type playing game. I didn't really feel that too too much. Um, I mean, Dragon Ball Z has had a lot of games, a lot of games. In fact. As far as going back to the original PlayStation, um, I'd say my favorite, especially for the three original Dragon Ball Dragon Ball games, um, Dragon Ball Z, the Great Dragon Ball Legends, is absolutely my favorite game. It's a it's a free kind of a free roaming game um, that you you know battle each other. I always thought that was great. I've always wished for like a like an updated version of that game and I guess we kind of got one with Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse that was that was kind of the updated version of Dragon Ball Z the great Dragon Ball Legends but it like I had I had a lot of fun playing that game I mean Ultimate Battle 22 was cool that's a good game especially if you got little kids around for them to play um Dragon Ball Final Bout I thought was I, I thought Dragon Ball Final Bout was fun it was a little slow but it was fun it was their attempts out of three Dragon Ball games, so I couldn't knock them for that. But my favorite video game will always be Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3. That's that's just how it is. Um, and that's pretty much what goes, goes with that. That's, how, that's all I got to say about that. Question number five is asking, your favorite moment in all of Dragon Ball? Now, there's been a lot of moments within the entire Dragon Ball franchise that are worth praising a lot um when goku and vegeta fused the first time to become vegeta that was an awesome moment and the fact that that episode left on it left ended on them finally fusing together i thought that was great um you know goku finally beating boo and telling him that he hopes to see him again you know, Vegeta finally giving Vegeta finally be getting finally giving Goku his props on being the better fighter or be, being the better warrior. That was an awesome moment. Um, I th I still say my favorite moment in all of Dragon Ball was Cell's defeat. Cell's defeat at the hands of Gohan will now and forever be my favorite moment. In Dragon Ball, in, in all of Dragon Ball, I mean, it's it's followed up by Vegeta beating the crap out of Frieza in Dragon Ball Z um, Resurrection F, when he when he turned Super Saiyan Blue and started giving start, and started running Frieza's fade. I was like, finally, finally, Vegeta gets his revenge, finally, but. The, the Gohan beating Cell, and again, this all comes from the fact that I was so invested in the entire season. You know, we were there watching what Cell was doing to not only the human race but to the Z fighters. You know, him just get basically him getting his way the whole entire season. You know, and it's like no one was able to stop him. Goku couldn't beat him. And Goku, and Goku dies. Gohan sacrifices an arm just to save Vegeta. You know, he's doubting himself. He doesn't think he can do this. You know, and, you know, it's like, and everything just, everything just lined up in a perfect way. You know, Goku from the afterlife is coaching his son to fight him back. You know, Piccolo, Krillin, Yamcha, T.N., they decide to jump in and help Gohan any way they can, even though they know they're not strong enough to st to put a dent in Cell. Cell battling, having a beam struggle with Gohan, but at the same time, blasting off the other Z fighters. The planet pretty much being destroyed by this beam struggle. Gohan, like, wavering in his confidence, not sure he can do this. And he's a 12-year-old kid. Is like 11 or 12 is one of the two you know everybody's depending on him nobody knows what's going to happen Vegeta comes in with the Big Bang attack save 
and then during that last stretch Gohan finally hits him and blasts him and, and completely disintegrates him you know everything about that scene is what makes Dragon Ball great everything about it you know watching him finally unleash his full power Cell being stunned at what's happening to him right now Gohan walking him down destroying him and the look on Gohan's face when you see it as like it's like his face was our face it was it was us saying finally I'm, am I getting teared up talking about this am I tearing up I might be I don't know but just watching Gohan's expression as he finally destroys Cell like to me no other enemies defeat tops that one none you know when gohan i mean when goku you know gave frieza some of his energy and tried to take off to me when gohan blast when goku blasted frieza on planet namek to me that was just like i tried to help you and you, and this is what you do i, I tried to help you and it's like goku said you fool I tried to help you and then and, it, and it's just like you know what whatever I'm going home um when again when Goku defeated Majin defeated Kid Buu it was like you know yeah it's cool it's all right it's okay that one wasn't as in, impactful to me as it probably could have been but you know um even with uh even at the end of Dragon Ball GT with Goku beating, you know, Omega Shenron with the spirit bomb and then finally disappearing, you know, going with Shenron into, you know, the unknown, you know, that one kind of, that one was a good one to me too. Even though a lot of people don't like Dragon Ball GT, that one was a good to me also, you know, when Goku was like, you know, I've never been this tired and, the, and then he absorbs the Dragon Balls and he disappears. It was like, you know, even like the, the very end of GT where, Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr. are sparring, and then you see Gohan, Goku, and he's walking through the crowd, and then, you know, they say this is the end of the Dragon Ball story, and it's like, it kind of makes you tear up a little bit, just a little bit, you know, because, like, you realize this is kind of the end until Super came out, so, but, you know, just, it, uh, everything about Gohan finally beating Cell was, it was, it was it was, it was it was perfect to me it's perfect gohan beating cell was probably the perfect moment in all of dragon ball and you know i, rem I remember like the only other time i was on the edge of my seat with a dragon ball thing was dragon ball super broly but watching every time i watch that scene i get a little emotional to be honest with you every time i watch a gohan beat cell i do get a little bit of a, i do i get it gets an emotion emotional reaction for me because it's like he finally got him he finally found the strength you know everyone's trying to do their part to help him and he finally got him and it's like wow and the fact that you know it's an 11 slash 12 year old kid who did this it's a kid who saved the world you know and I know we're used to probably kids saving the world in like different comic books and stuff but like at the time it was still fairly unknown to a lot of us you know to watch a kid save the world and beat the bad guy the way he did that is that will for not that is now and forever will be my favorite moment in all of Dragon Ball Gohan beating Cell. Number six, what's your one criticism of Dragon Ball? We have to be honest here. Anyone who's a true fan of anything knows that there are things, there are things that exist that are without fault, that are not without fault. Dragon Ball has a lot of things that can go wrong with it. Um, Dragon Ball has a lot of things that has gone wrong with it. Um, I think the one criticism that I have about Dragon Ball in all of Dragon Ball, I don't know um, if I if I really had to pick, I didn't like that they didn't really 
stick with the original plan. And that plan being Gohan becoming the hero of Earth. I didn't, I, 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 you know, everyone loves Goku. Don't get me wrong. I like, I love Goku too, you know, but I just think it would have been an interesting dynamic to have Gohan become the, become the hero now following his father's footsteps and protecting the earth. You know, who knows what, you know, the Boo saga would have been like if it was just Gohan as the hero. You know, I mean, yeah, Gohan, Vegeta, Trunks, Goten, all that stuff, you know. But it just makes me think, you know, what would have happened, you know, had... I mean, I, I, I can only guess that had Gohan remained the hero of the remaining Dragon Ball Z run, <laughs> it might have been him to reach Super Saiyan 3. Hell, it might have been Vegeta to reach Super Saiyan 3. We don't know. You know, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. The Boo Saga gave us some great gems. It gave us Majin Vegeta. Again, he's another one of my favorite characters. I enjoyed Majin Vegeta a lot. You know, we did get Boo. We got not so much Fat Boo. I could really, I don't really care much for Fat Boo. But we did get Super Boo, which I thought was an awesome character. Second only to Perfect Cell, to be honest with you. As far as just a character. Not so much as a villain, but as a character. We wouldn't have gotten Kid Boo. We wouldn't have gotten Deborah. Um, but I just, I really wished, and I know this is not, probably not directly fault of Akira Toriyama, because he's, he's gone on record to say that he's been under pressure from the publishers for a while now. He's been under pressure from a lot of them to just write the story this way, even though he's had a plan for the story on his own. But I really... If, like I said, if I had to pick one one major criticism, I just wish that Akira Toriyama had stuck to his guns and just kept the story with Gohan as the hero. I would actually, I would like to see a version of the Buu Saga where it's just Gohan as the only hero. Well, the hero the Earth needed, aside from Goku. That's what I would like to see. Um, And the final question, question number seven, ask... What is one change you would make to the Dragon Ball franchise? Now, not to go back to question six, where I talked about my one criticism, where I would think that, that I would like to see Gohan as the main hero. I think one change I would make, there's actually, there's actually a couple. This took me a while to, to this just took me a while to narrow down as to what change I would make to the Dragon Ball franchise. And it came down to two. It came down to two. Um, one is I would have tried to make the movies canon. All the animated movies, I would have tried to make those movies canon. Um, I know there's been people who have tried to fit the movies into the Dragon Ball timeline. And some of them are not that hard to do. Um, you look at, um, look at, uh, I mean, if you skip over, I mean, Tree of Might, World of Strongest. You know that's early on. That's early on. That's that's not that hard. You know those can that could literally happen before Dragon Ball even. That could that can almost happen. <laughs> I mean, well, I guess you. I guess now that I think about it, it's kind of hard to place those two. Um, well, Tree of Might and World Strongest, because technically that would have to be after Raditz comes to Earth. You know, World Strongest can take place before Raditz comes to Earth, and Tree of Might can come after. After, um, I might be getting this wrong. Could come after Raddus comes to Earth. You know, the dead zone is the dead zone. We get that. You know, we know where that kind of falls into the into the story. Um, but you look at Lord Slug. You know, that can come in before the fight before before the fight on Namek. <laughs> you know, Return of Cooler is after Frieza is defeated. That's simple. Um, I mean, I mean, Cooler's Revenge, the Return of Cooler is after, you know, Vegeta has become a Super Saiyan. So that falls right before the Android Saga. You know, Broly can happen during the Android Saga. I mean, if they wrote it the right way, I'm pretty sure there's a way to fit all of these into the, um, Dragon Ball, the main continuity of Dragon Ball Z. Um, what 
one thing I would have definitely liked to have seen, um, and this is going into Dragon Ball Super, um, the Tournament of Power, which is supposed to be like a multiversal tournament. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. But what I would have liked to have seen is something akin to Dragon Ball Multiverse. For those of you guys who don't know, Dragon Ball Multiverse is a webcomic that's produced by two gentlemen. I can't figure out their names. Um, it'll probably be either, either in the description box or somewhere down below in this video. Um, two gentlemen created the web series, webcomic, and this in this webcomic has been actually going on for years. Um, I think I first discovered this thing like back in like 2014. Like I think I discovered it in 2014. It's been going on for years, and it's still going on now. <laughs> Again, it's called Dragon Ball Multiverse, and these two comic book writers and artists um, put together something that's very similar to the Tournament of Power. Um, basically, it's a tournament held in a completely different universe, and everyone who's competing in that tournament come from different they come from different universes but it's not like how it is in dragon ball super you know here in the, in this tournament you have you basically it's like this you have our universe and that's the dragon ball z universe that we know and love one we've been watching for years <laughs> in another section of the stadium there's a universe where you know the supreme kai's did their job they like wiped out every threat in the universe and basically the Supreme Kai's in that universe are they play more of an active role in protecting the universe so there's a universe that exists like that there's a uni another universe where Perfect Cell won the beam struggle with Gohan and killed every all the Z fighters there's another universe where Super Buu won and he absorbed everything that he thought was useful and he rules the universe there's a universe where Bobbity and Deborah never died, and it's Bobbity, Deborah, and Fat Boo, and they they are running all over the universe, destroying things. There's a universe where Akira Toyama's different characters from like Doctor Slump, you know, they're taking part of the tournament. So it's Doctor Slump, Aureli, you know, different other characters. There's a, another universe where every single Namekian on Planet Namek fused and became one being. And he is the strongest being in that universe. Strong enough that he defeated Frieza, Cell, and Kid Buu. There's a universe where Vegito never unfused. Even even as the Pataro earrings. And even though we understand the rules of the Pataro earrings now, he never unfused. So he remained one person. And as a matter of fact, um and, and he still and they still managed to give birth to Bra. Bra is still born in that universe. There's a universe where the Saiyans never gained access to technology, so they're still living kind of savage-like. There's another universe where Frieza, Cooler, and King Cold rule the entire universe. There's a universe where Broly is still alive, and he is the biggest threat at the tournament. There's a universe where Raditz, Dr. Raichi, and another character... They are the strongest in their universe. There's another universe where Vegeta, well, Vegeta the Fourth, as he's known as now, Vegeta the Fourth, he becomes king of the Saiyans, and he unlocks the key to the Super Saiyan power. And therefore, a lot of the other Saiyans in his in his court are Super Saiyans. And even to the fact that Goku, or should I say Kakarot, he's with the Saiyans. He's not from Earth. There's a universe where Krillin becomes the new Turtle Hermit. Uh, Android 17, our brother and sister, but Android 17 is Yamcha. Videl is a part of that crew. Um, I remember discovering that web comic a few years back and being and being so involved with it. I haven't read it in a while, but to me, I always thought that would make a great not. Like if not a great Dragon Ball Z movie, but a but a good Dragon Ball Z saga. Like even like even after the Boo saga, I always thought that would make a good saga to have. Like you know, as part of the you know, since Goku comes back to life, 
that would be a good soccer for them to have, like to close out the um, Dragon Ball <laughs> Z storyline. You know, that would also be good. Like, I will put a link in the description box below so you can check it out. But do yourself a favor, give yourself a chance to read it. I, I think, again, I think it's a really dope webcomic. I mean, if it wasn't so, it wouldn't be going on, but it is so dope. I don't even know where they're at right now. And not only do they cover what's happening currently within the tournament, they also do like one shot issues, which gives like different universes, given different universes backstory. So you get to see how Gohan lost to being struggled to sell and how Cell won. You get to see how uh, the coal, the frost demons take over the take over space. You get to see how Vegeta unlocked the Super Saiyan transformation and becomes king. You get to see all that. It's it it, it really is a dope um web comic. I really suggest that, and especially if you're a fan of the F Dragon Ball in general, read it. Definitely read it. I think you'll really enjoy it. But that would be the one change. I would I would include that. Again, even though it's not really licensed by you know Toy Animation or anything. I really would have included that. I would have included that into the Dragon Ball franchise. You know, so. All that being said, those are the seven Shenron questions. I am challenging everyone who watches this video, but I'm definitely issuing a challenge to Clock Lion, who is probably an even more big, who is probably an even bigger Dragon Ball fan than I am. So I'm challenging him to answer these questions. Post your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about these seven questions. Remember, use the hashtag the Shenron7 in your post. I can't wait to see what your answers are to these questions, and I look forward to reading them. I'm out. Peace.